Hello and welcome to this year Coriolis tutorial. This is for the combat rules, but I'm not using the base rules, I'm using the fan made rules from Coriolis Reloaded, the combat overhaul. Link in the video description below, because I think these rules are superior, easier to learn and not quite as deadly and random. Bit more tactical still deadly enough in my opinion. This is an example of combat through which I try to cover most of the combat rules though I do not and cannot cover every possible situation imaginable. This should cover your basics though. And it also includes a few of my house rules because I've already started modifying the combat overhaul. If you like this and want to see more like this, more tutorials, more Coriolis stuff, consider liking and subscribing to my channel. There's more where this came from. Now let's get started. To visualize combat, I like to use this here noteboard. You can use theater of the mind if the combat is fairly simple, but for anything tactical, you want a visualization. This noteboard has squares on one side and is white on the other, and it folds up really compact. And you can use this here back to clean up your old lines, which I should do before packing it away. Time to sketch out my scenario. A remote street with buildings on either side. Simple scenarios you can sketch up right before combat. More complex scenarios you should prepare when preparing the session. Drawing in these here double lines for the thick outer walls of the buildings, these will be heavy cover while the thinner interior walls will just be single lines for light cover. Cover gives you additional damage reduction on top of your armor. Light cover is equivalent to light armor, one point of damage reduction. Heavy cover is equivalent to heavy armor, two points of damage reduction. This can add up. Small lines at an angle with a semicircle our doors and uh, the gaps in the thick walls are windows. Let's add a few beds, tables and sofas and stuff to give the players some options to play around with and make the map a little bit more interesting. For initiative I'm using the icons card deck. Here you will find some ideas NPCs, all of the roles for ship combat, the crew stations, and you can use the entire deck like a deck of tarot cards to get ideas when creating an NPC, when preparing an adventure. But I've reduced this to just nine cards, one for each icon for the initiative. You can of course use all D66 cards if you want to. Or just use regular playing cards, 1 to 10 will serve you well. Now here's the scenario. The group is searching for a hostage held by the syndicate in this here building complex. But there's a guard at the door, so the group can't really peek inside. They plan to take out the guard silently, then peek inside. This is the formation operative up front, followed by the soldier, followed by the deckhand, last but not least, the pilot. The action starts with the operative sneaking up on the door guard. To sneak up on the door guard, the operative must test infiltration. Five dice for agility, plus two for infiltration, but she wants to get into close combat, that's minus two dice for difficulty. One success, but 
This is just a minion, so she successfully sneaks into close combat, ready to strike with her Mercurium knife. Minions are like dimnished NPCs. They only have one hit point, they can't pray to the icons for rerolls, and they are suppressed automatically if they suffer any stress damage more than that later. They have two advantages. They make it easier to keep track of the hit points of the NPCs, because minions don't have hit points. And they make the game feel more heroic, more like an action movie. Because there are many characters on the board that the characters can take out quickly, instead of every character having a similar amount of hit points and resilience as the player characters. Now, for this year's sneak attack, it means that we don't really have to calculate the damage. If it goes through the armor, it's good enough to take it out. Also, to sneak up on it, it's just a simple roll instead of a contested roll. This combined makes stealth gameplay, like we would see in, let's say, Metal Gear Solid, possible. With regular NPCs you would have a high chance of failure whenever you sneak up on someone and it is very hard to take out a regular NPC in just one hit without them being able to raise the alarm. Since this is a minion, simple attack takes it out, now the operative can look through the windows and scout out the inside. Here's the target, the hostage bound up on the bad side with another minion guarding it. There's this guy on the sofa with more bling and better armor and weapons than the rest, probably the leader of these thugs. And then there are two more thugs at the entrance sitting at the table guarding the door playing dice or maybe Dungeons and Dragons. And now that the group has intel on the situation, it's time to come up with a plan. Here's the plan. The soldier and the deckhand will break through the front door and take out the two door guards. The operative will keep the leader of the gang busy and the pilot will take out the hostage guard through the window. But before the start of the combat, the operative tries to do another sneak attack, this time on the gang leader. Again, 7 dice for sneaking, this time only minus 1, because she's not going into melee, but she is within 10 meters, within short distance, as measured with a pen. You can use a pen to measure distances on the battlefield, as long as you always use the same pen. This pen is 10 meters on this map. This time, it's a contest roll against the gang leader's observation skill of 6. Obviously, this makes sneaking up on someone much harder. And indeed, this gang leader has two successes. But I think this is a good combination. Minions you can easily sneak up and take out and like bosses that are hard to sneak up on take out. And this boss notices the operative with a gun in hand at the window and we start regular combat. But we start with a surprise round because the players are ready for combat, the goons are not. So each of the players gets to draw two initiative cards and keep the better one. You don't have to reshuffle between every door but you can. And last, the boss and the minions draw initiative. As the players had hoped for, they go first, the boss and his minions go last. Now, at the beginning of combat and at the beginning of each round, players can make plans and switch out initiative cards. Their plan for this round is that the deckhand breaks through the door, followed by the soldier, followed by the pilot and the operative last in reserve. We start with the guy breaking through the door. That's a simple force check. One success will be enough and he's pretty strong. So, easily done. 
those questions, let's mark that somehow. And that was slow action. By the way, this is how you can keep track of your actions. Card right side up, card tapped, you've used your fast action. Card face down, you've used your slow action. You can do that in any order. Put it upside down using your slow action. You've got a fast action in reserve for a reaction. Tap it, now you have spent both fast and slow action. With its slow action, the deckhand decides to rush through the door, mostly to get out of the way. To the next door he goes. Now it's the soldier's turn. She decides to glance around the corner and shoot at both of these guys. So let's assemble this massive die pool. She starts with a quick shot, just a fast action to take out the minion on the right. A simple hit will do it, but no luck. Spend a darkness point, pray to the icons, roll again. This time, it's a hit. And since this is a minion, one hit is enough to take it out. Well, as long as you at least deal one point of damage, they could have armor. The next attack gets all of the dice. Slow action, regular attack. And with this huge amount of dice, it's a hit. And the soldier takes out the second goon, finishing her turn. Next up, it's the pilot's turn. She really wants to take the last one out, but she's not that great of a shot. So she pens a uh, fast action to aim, adding two dice to the pool. And no luck this time. Curses. Pray to the icons, next roll will be better. And a single success. Well, it's a minion, that's enough. This ends the turn and takes the last minion from the board. With that, we can take the initiative card from the board to keep things clear. Last, it's the operative's turn. She really wants to get close to the leader to keep him from shooting anyone. But she first has to get through the window and still cover the distance through the room. The GM decides it's a fast action to go through the window and then she would have to move with a slow action. But you can do a rush attack. Use your slow action, rush the enemy in a straight line and do a melee attack. But the GM decides it's probably a good idea to try to block this attack, so he spends a darkness point and takes the uh, melee die. You have to announce this before the attack roll. When blocking, you can spend your successes to lower the successes of the attacker, and if they have none, they miss. Do a counter attack and do damage of your own. Change initiative with the attacker or disarm them. This time the defender has no successes against the attackers too. One success you just need to hit the guy. The other you can spend to do more damage, disarm him, knock him prone. Change initiative or what the operative decides to do grapple them. I found these standard grappling rules to be too restrictive and boring. I wanted more for something that allows for action like you see in a John Wick movie where you would grab a guy, throw him around and as long as John has a hand free you can use a gun, steal, steal the opponent's gun and shoot them. So I came up with a house rule for grappling. If you grapple your opponent as a bonus effect in close combat, you bind the opponent's weapon so it cannot be used against you, and you hold the opponent so they cannot move. The only actions they can perform is an attempt to break free, 
which is a slow action that succeeds if the opponent wins an opposed melee combat roll against you. Extra success in Breaking Free can be spent like in blocking. While you are grappling, a special action you can perform, apart from releasing your opponent, is a grapple attack. This works as a normal unarmed attack, but it is a fast action and cannot be blocked, so basically a chokehold. You also have one hand free to use for normal attacks, be it unarmed or with weapons. Then I have the Gun Fu talent that lets you shoot at closest range without the minus 3 modifier. I mark this opponent as grappled just on the map and apply the normal damage from the melee attack. The opponent has armor, but the Mercurium knife also has armor penetration, so that evens out for 2 damage. Finally, it's the gang leader's turn. They still have their slow action, but all they can do, since they are grappled, is try to break free, which is a contested roll and no luck. So that finishes this round. It is at this point that the GM looks at the darkness points, grins evilly and says, you know what, this was way too easy. In general, you can spend one darkness point for an inconvenience, like a jamming weapon or maybe one minion in reinforcements. But you could also spend two darkness points at once. Now this is some serious trouble. Maybe a whole group of reinforcement minions. Or you could spend three darkness points at once. Now shit really hits the fan. Maybe it's an entire new group of minions and their leader, a cybernetically enhanced heavily armored brute with a sledgehammer, just breaks through the door of the neighboring building. While his men show up behind him and at the windows, Vulcan scorpions in hand. This is something you could reasonably do anyway. The gang has made a lot of noise with all the shooting that has happened. But if you use Darkness Point for all the bullshit you pull as a GM, it stings less. So, we pull initiative for the new guys. But instead of having them act right away, the GM decides it's time for a new round, refresh everyone's initiative, give the group a chance to react to the new threat. But even in the new round, it's first the Cybernetic Brute's turn. And he just rushes the biggest threat he perceives, which is the soldier, and proceeds to clobber her with a sledgehammer with two successes. Now, the soldier decides to block that, and realistically I should have declared that before doing the role, but I'm just one guy running around the table. So I'm doing that wrong all the time in this video, but keep that in mind. You have to declare the block before the attack roll. Anyhow, she blocks one die, leaving one die still hitting her, so the hammer does base damage of 4, reduced by the soldier's heavy armor by 2, to just 2 damage. Yeah, the soldier can take that. It's the group's turn. They decide that the pie list is in the hottest water, so she should be acting next. She decides to first take a shot at that guy before running into cover. One success. That's not actually enough to do any damage to, through the heavy cover, which gives you two points of armor. But in ranged combat, even if you're not hit, if you're attacked, you have to roll for stress. Actually, I'm doing that wrong here. This is a minion. You don't roll for stress. Anytime you would have to roll for stress for a minion, 
they're automatically suppressed and lose their next fast action. You only actually have to do the role for like a named character. Now at this point I can show you my modified GM screen. I just use some uh, silly putty staff poster strips to glue some extra table from the modified combat rules over the original table, so critical hits and very importantly the stress table. Anyhow, when filming this I wrongly believe this minion would be out of the picture for suffering stress, but it would just be suppressed. After that, with the fast action, the pilot jumps through the window, gets into cover, finishing her turn. Now it's the soldier's turn. Now she's in the bad spot, in melee engaged with the brute and in the line of fire of all of his minions. So she knows she has to get out of there. She runs with her slow action, but so she doesn't get a free melee attack from the brute, she has to pass a dexterity check, which she does with one success. So she runs through the door, jumps over the table and flips it over to get some light cover. You could argue that flipping the table over is an action in and of itself, but I decided to be generous here and would advise you to be generous to your players as well. They are enough trouble as it is. Now it's the deckhand's turn and he just moves over to this first gang leader, decides to clobber him with his power fist. Has an extra success to boost the damage to 4, but the armor of the guy reduces to 3 points of damage. Still not half bad. Now it's the operative's turn. She is grappling the gang leader. And she has many options, but she just decides to shank him with a knife, quick attack for two successes. No more darkness points for any reactions left. So this guy has to take the damage and he is down and out. That leaves the operative with a slow action. She decides to run over to the hostage and secure them. Finally, it's the minion's turn. This one's suppressed, but I thought he was out. The other three don't really have a good line of fire on anyone right now, but the pilot's pretty close to the window. So, two of the minions rush out of the door to the window and shoot at her. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Pen tells us they can get this far, and these minions just have six dice when shootings, but they're gangsters. They've got automatic weapons and they're a bit stupid, so they go full auto. Just four dice per attack. But now they have lots of attacks. First one, two successes, spent for extra damage. That's not a lot of damage through the cover, but you have to roll on the stress table. Now, rolling on this table doesn't seem so bad at first. Nothing happens, maybe suffer one stress, but you roll 1d6 plus the stress you've already suffered. So quickly get suppressed and lose your next fast action. On a 9 plus, you're pinned down. Lose your next slow action. And you can quickly be suppressed and pinned down and then you have no more actions and the stress just keeps piling up until you're broken. Especially if you're under automatic fire from several minions. Those attacks add up. Three attacks, six attacks, nine attacks. You really have to watch out for that. But it's also a way and a tactic you can use to suppress your enemies. They have to roll on suppression even if you don't hit, even if you don't do any damage. So if a few of you just keep shooting at the heavily armored guy and keep suppressing him, they won't be able to act and are eventually broken by stress. 
This is another house rule. When you're broken by stress, you have to roll on this here trauma table. And roll of 33 brings nightmares to the pilot for two days. Now, the last minion actually has a clear shot from the window to the soldier through the broken door. Since he doesn't have to move, he starts with a quick shot, with a fast action that hits but does no damage against the heavy armor and cover at the soldier. But the stress roller is terrible, so the soldier is already suppressed and suffers one stress. And then the bad guy goes full auto and the stress keeps piling up, but at least the soldier doesn't get pinned. Time to start a new round of combat and refresh everyone's initiative. Though the pilot is broken and on the ground and the soldier is already suppressed, so I tap that and remove the suppressed mark to keep track of it. First up at initiative 1 is again the cybernetic brood, rushes after the soldier and clovers her and she decides to block with her remaining action because uh, doesn't want to take all of that damage. Oh, that's not a good roll. Oh, that's not good at all. That can't stand. Try again. That's slightly better. That's at least one success that she spends to lower the damage by one, which together with the armor keeps her from suffering a critical hit. Next up, the deckhand rushes to the brute and tries clobbering him, but finds out that the cybernetic brute has three points of armor, doesn't do any damage. It's the operative's turn. She decides to lob a grenade through the window right behind those two minions. Note, I would only use this here rule when playing theater of the mind. When you're playing with a better map, Cover should work normally and give armor as normal, in this case shielding the pilot from the grenade. Throwing a grenade is a standard ranged attack to hit where you want to hit, hit next to your primary target. If you have no successes, the GM might decide where the grenade bounces off to instead, maybe stay in the room. So you really want that to succeed. If you've got extra successes to spend, you can do more damage to the primary target or other targets within the blast radius. Grenade has a damage rating and a power rating. Damage rating is how much damage the grenade does to the primary target, power rating how much it does to secondary targets. In this case, more than enough to take the minions out, finishing the operative's turn. Now, there's one minion left, who doesn't really have all that great a shot, but just fight full auto, has no ammo anyhow. The GM decides to spend one of his darkness points to have that guy reload with the fast action. And with the slow action, he takes a normal shot at the deckhand. Three successes. Even though by the armor, that is four damage. That is a critical hit. So the deckhand has to roll on the critical hit table and suffers a broken leg. Running comes a slow action. Next up, it's the cybernetic brute's turn, who decides to clobber the soldier once more. Just one success. Soldier decides to block. Again, should have done that before rolling. And this time, she gets two successes. Now one she spends to cancel out the success of the attacker, so she's not hit at all. The other one, she could spend to disarm him, maybe to grapple with them, or to change out the initiative cards. Well, it's interesting. If you do this, I advise you to finish the turn 
and then move to the highest remaining initiative card. Don't just stay stupidly in the turn order. Of course, next, it's the soldier's turn now has the highest initiative. The soldier decides uh, this is not a winning battle and retreats, runs away. Rolls dexterity, has a success and gets away by a pen's length. Next up, the deckhand, who has to spend a slow action to run to get out of melee combat. Also, roll for dexterity, two successes even, and gets out by a pen's length. Lastly, the operative gets the hostage and now a bit overloaden jumps through the window with a slow action and then scurries away as far as she can. It should have been another slow action, mistake by me. Finally, the minion's turn, doesn't have a shot of anyone, runs out, still doesn't have a shot, runs up, runs after the hostage as far as he can. Those spending all of his action. Time for a new turn, time to fresh initiative. Now the brute doesn't begin, but at 1-1 one, one, it's the soldier's turn. Now this changes things. She decides, oh, it's still not a winning battle. Better to get out of here. So she jumps through the window, gets rid of the last minion and clears the path for the others to follow. The deckhand needs a slow action with a broken leg to get out of there. Well, he's a tough guy, so he even takes up the pilot and runs out of there. Now, the brute could give chase, doesn't have any backup, but no, he's kind of crazy. So he will run after the party and we have a chase on our hands, but this finishes this encounter and this tutorial. If you've got any questions on the combat rules or the rules in general or any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. For now, may the traveler watch over you, dreamers, until we shall meet again.